All right, it's Seattle Mariner Day here today, 30 for 30, 7 o'clock tonight. We'll be all over this Mariner team. Here is our good buddy Jerry DePoto. He runs it, and he says hello early in the morning out there in Peoria where it's been cold in spring training. Jerry, you know we love talking to you. How are you today, pal? Okay? Good, Doug. Thanks for having me. You got it. I know you had to put out a couple of fires a couple of weeks ago. How's the mood of the team right now? You did a nice job with it. Give me a little sense on the mood of the ball club after what happened the first couple of days of spring training. Go ahead. Yeah, the mood of the club, I think, is it's normal. They're the best tonic for any kind of crisis management is just to play baseball games. And we've got baseball players who are focusing on making teams and, and doing the things they need to do to get ready for the season. And, and I feel like that's been their 100 percent focus. We, we had a tough, you know, seven, right. 10 days trying to manage this. But I think we're we're to the point now where we're just focused on playing ball. All right, if Kalenic has been hurt, he's back on a team now. I mean, is he going to start the year, I would think, based on the idea he's not ready yet anyway, he's going to start the year somewhere in the minor leagues, right? That's likely. You know, he'll play tonight, and tonight will be his first day back. And quick healer, we, we thought this was going to be a, a two- to four-week thing, but Jer Jared works hard. He is so focused and, and intent uh, on doing his thing on a baseball field. And, and we'll see him out there tonight against the Angels in Peoria and, and see where it takes us. All right, that's number one. I would think Seager's motivated, right? I mean, everybody knocking him. Last year of a deal, I'd expect to get a big year out of your third baseman. Jerry, thoughts there? Now, I've always described Kyle this way. He's like the baseball metronome. You, know, you can push really hard on the pencil what Kyle Seager's going to do. And, you know, getting to know him over these last five or six years and, and appreciate what he does every day, I don't think he needs any extra motivation. He just shows up and does his job. And it's a, it's, it's a productive two-sided player he plays good defense he drives in runs he's a, he's been such a steady force for all his years in seattle and i really don't think he needed any extra fire but there's he's having a wonderful spring uh, as good as he's ever looked at this time of year and and i'm really excited for what he'll do no i mean if he needed the fire he got it so that's good for there all right how about the whole thing with paxson how's his health we all know if he stays healthy he's good you brought him back at eight and a half mil has he looked in spring training so far? Does he make the uh, – is he ready to go first week of the season as far as the rotation goes, Jerry? Yeah, Pax has been throwing all his, his outings in B games. Uh, we've been doing morning work with James. Uh, injuries, no issue at all. So, you know, he's – the fact that you haven't seen him in an A game has nothing to do with his physical health. He's looked great since the day he got in. Physically, he's in better shape than I think I've ever seen him. He's, a, he's pretty focused. Fastball's been up into the 95, 96 range. And he's stretched out now to, to three, four inning uh, increments. He'll throw again, I believe, on Saturday or Sunday. And, you know, fingers crossed. He looks great. We anticipate he'll take one of the first three starts of the season. All right, Kyle Lewis, you're a rookie of the year out there in the outfield. I mean, you, wanna, you don't want to put too much pressure on him, but you love what you saw last year. Hopefully no sophomore jinxes. Thoughts with him? I, I don't think you'll see too much turbulence with Kyle. He's such a well-grounded player and person. He's had a really nice spring training. And there's a, he's just as steady as they come. But the, the talent is super. Uh, you don't really see Kyle pull the ball all that much, which is such an, a unique thing for a power hitter at this young in his career. He hits in the middle of the field to, to the off-field side. It's it's. Big power to right center field. He takes his walks. And and the most encouraging thing for us outside of just how quickly he's acclimated to the big leagues is the, the, the quality and consistency of his approach every day. He, he doesn't waver. And I think that's going to allow him to avoid a lot of those ups and downs that do go with your sophomore year. All right, Evan White, we all know he can field. Now we got to get him to hit a little better than 176. Had power, but... Didn't like the batting average. Give me some thoughts with him on his second year. Go ahead. You know, Evan, talented young guy. And we knew last year going in that it was going to be a challenge for him offensively to, to catch up quickly. And he got in a slump early and he let it catch. I get it. It, it got him and he started to, to let it roll. But the approach never wavered. He swung at the right pitches. He hit the ball very hard. And we saw stretches of time where, where we saw what Evan can be when all of those things are clicking. And it's a 
the the package is there for him to be a multi-dimensional impact player on a on a major league team, and we think that's going to happen. Uh, nobody works harder. He's a wonderful young guy who we think is going to take off, and we believe it'll be this year. You know, he's again doing those same things, swinging at the right pitches and hitting the ball hard, and and at some point the result is going to catch up with the process because his process has been really. <laughs> Good to hear that. Uh, is the team uh, you've built up this farm system, which was terrible before you got there, uh, is the team in your eyes, Jerry, now and in the future, are they a little better off pitching wise? Or I would assume because of those two kids in the minor leagues, a little better off positional wise. Where do you stand there? Yeah, you know, I think we're pretty well balanced. We're a little light in the infield, you know, in terms of depth and, and some of the young players coming through our system. But with outfielders, you know, one a revelation for us this spring has been Taylor Trammell, who's been terrific, in addition to Kelnick and Julio Rodriguez and Kyle Lewis and, and Mitch Hanniger. We think in the outfield we've got a really good group. Uh, the pitching on the major league side, with the additions of guys like James Paxton and Chris Flexen to join Justice Sheffield and Marco Gonzalez and, and Justin Dunn, who looks really good this spring, we do have a, a series of high-end young pitching prospects that are coming guys like George Kirby and Emerson Hancock and Logan Gilbert, who we feel like somewhere between, you know, midseason this year and midseason next year, all those guys have an opportunity to, to ascend to Seattle and really change what, what our pitching staff looks like long-term. Kirby, Rye, New York, I'm familiar. So there you go with that. Uh, uh, spent many a day with them. So there you have it. All right. Now, how about the, Pressure on the franchise. You know, all eyes are going to be on Seattle based on what occurred. Haven't made the playoffs in a long time. And so, you know, they almost, you're going to be looked on a little more, you know, carefully than normal uh, based on, you know, what happened here. And of course, uh, historically, with the Mariners having some postseason struggles, it's going to be interesting to see how the franchise handles that, Jerry. You're the spokesman. Give me some thoughts there. Go ahead. Yeah, I think people are always watching. And if there's if there's no pressure, it probably means that you're not doing anything particularly interesting. <laughs> so it's you know, it's been a couple of decades since the Mariners have been in the postseason. We can't avoid that reality. What I've always messaged to this team and among our staff is that we can't control what's happened in the past two decades. We can only control what happens moving forward. And and this year we knew that coming into the season we were gonna be young, we're very talented. And we feel like young, talented teams tend to gel quicker than most people think they will. And our hope is that we're one of them. Uh, we have that young ability uh, or that young talent with the ability to jump quick. And with some of the, the young bats that we have in this lineup, with the young arms I just discussed, and with the right ingredients in our bullpen, and that remains to be seen, uh, we have a chance. We, we believe we're getting better. And we think this, the second half of this season really has a chance to be an exciting one. No, there you go. Good answer. Uh, strange schedule. Last thing, Jared. Strange schedule. Open with the Giants. You know, then you go White Sox. Then you go to Minnesota and Baltimore. You don't play a lot of teams in your division right out of the gate. And you, and you, and you open with an NL team in interleague. A little odd. Thoughts there. Go ahead. Now, looking at the schedule, it, it's one, we get to see a lot of teams that we're familiar with from, from playing in Arizona. But I think the schedule makers wanted to make sure we saw most of the best teams in baseball right out of the chute <laughs> to really test our, our, our ability to, to hit the ground running. So, you know, seeing the world champs and some of the better teams or most talented teams in the American League right out of the chute is uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge for our young team, but one that I think we're up for. It, it should be fun to watch. Great job, Jerry. Thanks for giving us so much time. Uh, have a good rest of the spring training. Appreciate you coming on here today. All right, Doc. Have a great day.